välkomna tillbaka till aktiespararna och aktiedagen här i Stockholm. Vi fortsätter med nästa företagspresentation. Den kommer vara på engelska så eh, har ni några frågor så kan ni även skriva dem på svenska. Jag ska göra mitt bästa för att sätta dem. Men eh, vi ska se om vi har med oss här på digitalt. Har vi Christian Saler? Hello? Hej Erik. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, welcome. Where are you? Where are you uh, broadcasting from? I'm in Freiburg, in Breisgau, that's southwest of Germany. All right, uh, welcome, Christian, and uh, I will leave uh, the stage, and you will have it here for 20 minutes, and after that we will have some Q and A together. Thank you, Eric. Hello, everybody. I want to use the next 20 minutes to explain you who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Clean Industry Solutions. Here at Clean Industry Solutions, we focus on clean energy and clean water, which are basically the fundamentals of life and which are also essential for a clean industry. This is what we want to reach. We want to make industry carbon neutral, clean, and we want to come to a circular economy. And to be more precise, Our company, Clean Industry Solutions Holding, is an investment company who invests in companies providing innovative solutions for a sustainable industry and a circular economy. We have made an IPO um, end 2018, first day of trading on Spotlight. Stock exchange was January 2019. So we were now one and a half years on Spotlight Stock Exchange. And in July, we changed, we make a list change from Spotlight to Nasdaq First North, um, mainly motivated by the need to, to have our shares internationally tradable, because um, our subsidiaries of this holding, which are Industrial Solar and Solar Spring, those are 100% owned by Clean Industry Solutions, are both located in Germany and addressing markets in Europe and outside of Europe. And it's very important for us that the stakeholders in those companies and customers um, have access to our shares. This is why we have changed to Nasdaq First North. What are these subsidiaries doing? How does it fit in our business model of this holding? And that's just solar is reducing the energy costs and the greenhouse gas emissions by offering engineering and full integration of renewable energy systems into the power supply of our industrial customers. And the other subsidiary, Solar Spring, saying it in a nutshell, is providing systems engineering and full implementation of water treatment and recycling systems based on advanced membrane technologies. So now, as you know what we are up to, let me go more into detail and tell you why we do what we do. So here you have an overview over the complete portfolio of our services that we offer with those both subsidiaries, Industrial Solar and Solar Spring. It's ranging from consultancy services over engineering services, from conceptual design to detail engineering. We are offering thermal technologies for heating and cooling, but we also offer power generation using photovoltaics. And last but not least, process water, water treatment and resource recovery. And the nice thing be between those two companies and the technology is that they are complementary. Membrane distillation is thermally driven and industrial solar is tackling the process heat demand of industry. So we can use the heat to clean the water or to clean the wastewater or to recover valuable components from the wastewater. The background, why we do it, is the fact that 50% of all emissions are caused by the combustion of fossil fuel to generate thermal energy. And of those, 30% of all emissions are caused by industry. This is as much as all emissions caused by transport. Emissions by cars, trucks, planes, ships, trains, everything. And just imagine this huge amount of emissions which is caused by industry and which is 
not really tackled. I mean, it's it's a huge terminal demand that industry has, and we are always thinking about electricity, but we cannot completely electrify this thermal energy demand. We, we, we can use heat pumps, we can use electric heating, we can use hydrogen, but I think there is more that has to be applied. And also very interesting is that 80% of all industries that use heat also use water. And here we come with the two companies that our holding is, uh, is owning with Industrial Solar and Solar Spring. We are tackling both problems, the process heat demand and the water demand. And we are driving the water technology, the membrane distillation with heat. This is a fact I cannot stress often enough. It's so important because it's the industrial growth that we expect in the next decades to come. So according to this study and also other studies, we can expect a industry growth of about 400% until 2050. But where is this industrial growth happening? It's not happening here in Europe or in Sweden or Germany. It's happening in the so-called emerging markets. Where are these emerging markets? They're India, Africa, Latin America. So mostly sunny places and there will be industrial growth and they need a lot of heat for the production lines. And this is the market that we are addressing. And with our technologies, we can achieve a rather high local value creation, which is also important. So the core technology of industrial solar is tackling the problem of solar heat, solar process heat. Here you see our linear Fresnel collector. This is a linear concentrating solar thermal technology. It's designed to generate temperatures up to 400 degrees C with a maximum pressure of 120 bar and in a power range from a couple of hundred kilowatt to about 30 megawatt. This technology, this, this solar collector can generate steam, it can superheat water, or it can heat up thermal oil. But we're not using just this technology. So our solutions that Industrial Solar is developing for our customers is based, they are based on a broad portfolio of technology. These are solar thermal technologies, these are photovoltaic technologies, but also systems like absorption chillers, heat pumps, or electric heating. And with those technologies, we are coming up with a concept how to integrate them with a complete system design, including control and storages and other components. So with certain technologies, we can feed in at a higher level, at the supply level, and with other technologies, we're feeding in on a lower level, a lower temperature level, like the process level. And what's helping currently is the natural gas price. It's skyrocketing, it's going up. And this, of course, makes our solutions more competitive. And this is helping us a lot. So now I come from Industrial Solar to Solar Spring. Solar Spring is the company which is addressing the water topic in, in industry, but also in other um, sectors. They have come up with a new manufacturing technology, which is reducing cost by 80%. This is a real game changer for us. And they are currently building the first systems based on this, on this new technology. It's a new ceiling concept. It's very short production times. They can produce higher volumes, better quality, and they're really flexible. So this is really, really important to know. And this is a, a big game changer for us. What can their technology be used? Let me show you some some showcases, metal pickling, being more precise. If you have, a, for example, a stainless steel construction, which is welded, um, you typically do a surface treatment, which is done with a bath with acid, with hydrochloric acid. So on the left-hand side, you see such a stainless steel construction after welding, before pickling. And on the right-hand side, you see how it looks after the pickling. And this pickling is done in those huge baths with hydrochloric acid. And if this process is performed, then uh, you get at the end a wastewater containing acid, iron, and sometimes even zinc. And this 
treatment and recycling of this wastewater is very difficult, very expensive, and very energy intensive. It's done with pyrohydrolysis. This is a thermal process. And the alternative is membrane distillation. And with this change in technology, it's possible to save about 75% of energy, save a lot of carbon emissions, and it's easily integrated in such a uh, metal pickling site. And last but not least, that's very important for the customers and industry. The expected return on investment is less than two years. Another case, also very interesting, um, is um, our projects for potable water. There is a German nonprofit organization named Atmosphere. They are offering offsets for greenhouse gas emissions. So you might have come across their services when you booked a ticket uh, for a trip by plane. You can pay a couple of kroner or euro more to offset your carbon emissions that are generated on this flight. And Atmosphere is using that money to offset your carbon emissions by investing in projects that are saving carbon emissions. And um, they are financing renewable energy projects in about in more than 15 countries worldwide. And they rely ex exclusively on, on donations, on voluntary climate payments from private people, but also from companies, from businesses. And now Solar Spring has recently received the first order with a volume of about 50,000 euro, half a million kroner, for a water purification system, a so-called water kiosk in Burkina Faso. Um, so, and they wanna build more. So they have signaled that they wanna place more orders. And uh, there are more and more companies that are making donations to offset their carbon emissions. And that's a very interesting effect. So to my understanding, it seems that some companies, for them, it's easier to donate money and deduct it from taxes than changing their internal processes or changing the processes that are really generating the, the carbon emissions. So that's another way to cope with the carbon emissions. You can see a photo um, of the drilling um, for this uh, first order from atmosphere in Burkina Faso. And the next photo is a, is a photo of a water kiosk. This is not, uh, there's another project in another country in Africa, but here you can see how it works. There's a micro payment system. So people uh, pay a little bit for the water um, with this near field technology and they can charge their cards. And so the project is also uh, co-financed. So we have to act now, you all know that. I don't have to tell you over and over again. What we do currently, what we did, we changed from Spotlight Stock Exchange to NASDAQ First North, which is making our share internationally better tradable, which is very, very important for us. We have a lot of uh, funded projects currently, it's totally over 10 public funded projects, both subsidiaries together, Industrial Solar and Solar Spring. There are a couple of European funded projects, a couple of national funded projects, even state funded projects here in Germany. And all those R&D projects show that our work is really relevant and important and also show our quality of the work of our work. Otherwise, you wouldn't get so, so many proposals granted. And those funding is helping us to tackle problems that we have to tackle anyway, to develop technologies, to, de to develop solutions. There we get a co-financing. <clears throat> and this is a significant co-financing, co meanwhile. This project with Atmosphere is, I think, just the beginning. It's paving the way to more CO2 offset projects. Um, as well for solar spring as for industrial solar. Um, Atmosphere has uh, predicted that they're going to place more orders. Uh, we are meanwhile talking to uh, several multinationals um, and explaining them the system, how they can offset their uh, carbon emissions by making donations to organizations like Atmosphere, which is then again, financing projects with renewable energies um, 
to, to come up to neutralize those carbon emissions. This is a very interesting approach. And it's also very important um, after the COVID crisis, or we are still in the COVID crisis, um, but we do see a change. There are more and more multinationals are coming back to us and we are currently doing more and more energy concept studies. This is, uh, there's a very high demand for that. So obviously a lot of companies, a lot of multinationals and also smaller companies trying um, to reduce their carbon emissions, trying to rethink their energy supply, trying to use less fossil fuel. And this is what we're working on. So we are offering different um, types of studies, smaller studies, more elaborate stories with different financial volumes. And there seems to be a very good market for that. There seems to be a demand for that. And uh, what we also do is uh, we have adapted our business model to the COVID-19 situation because in the, in the last 18 months, we were basically limited um, to, to our home market. <clears throat> so before we were traveling a lot, we were addressing international markets. We were in Middle East, Latin America, Northern Africa, and many other countries. And uh, suddenly, due to COVID-19, it was no longer possible to travel. Um, companies had other uh, had another focus during the COVID-19 crisis. They were not. Um, it was difficult to convince them uh, to invest in such technologies during this time. So we had to adapt um, to the situation. We had to develop our home market um, and industrial solar especially um, had to adapt its services and portfolio to be able to generate revenue in the home market with this restriction that we couldn't travel. But now our sales team is traveling again and visiting our partners and we are ramping up the international sales activities since a couple of months, but now we have the first business trips again. And these are showing effects and the companies are more open, as I said before. And this looks very good. So thank you very much. I hope I could explain you who we are, what we do, why we do it. And I hope that you understood. If not, please ask. And I hope that you support us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Christian. Uh, a lot of interesting ideas and concepts there. Uh, I want to. Should we start off with uh, the donation? Can you elaborate more? What you mean with these company donate money to you know reach their? What I understood is the ESG goals or. Yeah. Yes, it's uh, kind of surprising to me too that um, that big companies are um, donating, so they're making donations to organizations, non-profit organizations like Atmosphere, which are typically known to private people when they book a plane ticket. And now I, I, I see or I got the information that large companies are donating rather large volumes to offset their carbon emissions. So they can act rather quickly. They make a donation, which is tax deductible. And another organization is basically using the budget to reduce the carbon emissions or to offset their carbon emissions. And this is a very interesting approach. It seems to me it's faster. It's the fast track, you know, when I have to talk to a big company with I don't know how many uh, production sites all over the world, and we have to analyze the energy demand of each site. We have to see how much area is available for renewable energy systems. Uh, what's their typical load profile and so on. It takes time. It's, it's, it's rather sluggish. But if a company says, okay, we make so and so many thousand tons of carbon emissions per year, we have to do something about it. And they're profitable and they're paying taxes. It's a rather quick decision to say, okay, let's make a donation to offset so and so many tons of CO2. And then um, non, um, non-profit organizations like Atmosphere, they are able to act rather quickly. And they have different players in the market that are able to realize projects to save carbon or to reduce carbon emissions. And that's, um, that's a very interesting approach. So I would really say it's the fast lane to carbon neutralization. 
mm. for the fast track. Uh, yes, uh, and actually I see here there's some uh, li- uh, listeners and viewers here that have some uh, questions for you. Um, atmosphere have signaled to increase volume capacities by 10 systems per year. Uh, do you have a time frame sooner or later? As far as I know, they stated that they, that they want to go up to 10 systems a year over the next five years. Um, but this is what they stated, and uh, Solar Spring um, has now received the first order. They have now already started with the African partner to, to install the system. It's basically a fully independent uh, water treatment system. It's powered with photovoltaics. It has a storage. Uh, basically, the water is cleaned with ultra filtration. And then the water is sold to potable water with this micropayment system. And this is currently being installed. And this is, of course, replacing um, diesel powered pumps, um, which are typically used for that purpose. And, and, and these systems are operating 100% renewable, independent. If they have a problem, they're sending a text message home and saying, I, I do need some maintenance. But they, are, um, they, they have a very low maintenance um, request. And they're running fully independent, and it's, uh, and Solar Spring has already installed a couple of those systems in Africa and also in Latin America. Mm. You uh, you you're sitting down in Germany. You have customers in different continent, and your share is here in the Sweden. Do you have any plans to acquire a company in Sweden? Uh, it's, a, it's a bit tricky. Uh, this is a good point. So it's very complex for us. The, uh, the communication is rather complex. So on the one hand side, we are communicating with our shareholders in Sweden. Um, our customers are partly in Germany, partly all over the world. And um, we have to see that we don't cause confusion. So this is um, difficult. We're working on that. We are trying to improve our communication. Um I cannot say that, I mean, we have now two subsidiaries, uh, one subsidiary industrial solar tackling um, energy for industry, solar spring tackling water for industry and for other sectors. Of course, we are totally open. I do see electrification as a topic which is more developed in the northern countries in Scandinavia. It's more common to use electricity for heating. In other countries, it's absolutely uncommon. Um, in emerging market, it's, it's, it's very uncommon. But I'm, um, for example, interested, me personally, to um, enter that field of carbon neutral fuels I think this is a a coming application. It's not only hydrogen, but you can also generate liquid fuels with renewable energies. And um, this will definitely be one component in the future to make our life uh, and industry more carbon neutral and greener. And this is definitely a, a sector or technology which is of importance and of interest. Mm. And I, I guess the next question here I have in front of me is from a potential uh, investor. Do you, do you have any concern regarding the liquidity in the shares? Concern? I mean, um, it's we are now at Nasdaq First North since since July. Uh, we we know about our difficult communication situation. We are working on that. We are improving our communication, and I think we have to work on our investor communication. This is clear, um, but I mean, the last uh, 18 months, it was, um, how to say, during lockdown, I think in Germany, it was a bit different than in Sweden. Um, we did not spend too much money, so we're also trying to, 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 to work very cost-efficient, and I think we might have saved a bit too much on communication. This was maybe not the best move. And we're going to increase the budget now for investor relations and communications in the next months. And, and I do see that this is important also to increase the liquidity in the share. Mm. And, and, if, and if we see to the competition out there, so I'm thinking more I'll more if there are any others with similar technologies than you. Do you, is this something you have identified, and and if so, who yeah. and where? I mean, I always say if you have no no competitors, then you have a problem. Uh, <laughs> then you are alone, and that's not a good sign. I'm uh, basically I'm happy to see 
companies addressing the same market, the same problem, because it means we are right um, with our theory that we have uh, that that there is a market potential that that we can address with those technologies and those services. So yes, I do like competition. What I don't like if is very big companies are joining the competition, then it becomes a bit unfair. I'm I'm not afraid of of small companies entering the competition, but anyway, it's a good sign um, that there has to there's a lot of work to be done, and I think there is enough water in the sea for all fish. I mean, it's uh, rather few companies uh, addressing this in the world, and uh, the number is growing. And that's good. And I think uh, each of the companies can have a market share, a, a reasonable market share. As I said, process heat and industry accounts for one third of our final energy consumption. That's a tremendous amount. I mean, for us alone, it's uh, we are way too small. Huh? Um, so it's important that more companies are addressing this market with similar technologies or, uh, or complementary technologies. This is a good sign. Mm. And it's it's very very common here when you see these kind of uh, companies like yours that you have nice numbers on on you know carbon dioxide and and what we need to be done. But do you actually quant- have you actually quantified like your main markets, the value of those? Oh, this is uh, yes, we have quantified. We we have shown figures of this market potential. This is going into billions of euros. Uh, this is just for Europe, um, but it but we are also highly dependent on the political boundary conditions. This is a uh, this is uh, true. I mean, what we are doing is not not an easy task. I mean, uh, trying to reduce fossil fuel consumption industry is like telling an alcoholic to drink less alcohol. Um, they are highly dependent on that energy. And as long as natural gas, for example, is cheaper, it is difficult to uh, to find customer, of course. It's very important to offer financing services, for example, um, so that the industrial customer can overcome this hurdle of this high investment, this initial investment, and uh, is then basically signing a, a energy um, contracting agreement and is basically paying every month like he paid his natural gas bill or oil bill before. And uh, yes, we do need the politicians to do their job and we do need support from shareholders all alone. We can't change it, but we are here to, to change it with the support of our shareholders and the support of the politicians. All right. With those words, we finish this one off. Thank you very much, Christian. Thank you, Eric.